to the Refocus Cloud tutorial. I wanted to walk you through the special part of the planner and just give you some helpful advice and tips on how to make the most out of this exercise. The purpose of the Refocus Cloud is to help you minimize your distractions so you can make more time for your passions and for your dreams. I believe that in our society that we live in, there are a million distractions bombarding us constantly. And I think that because of all these distractions, we're never alone with our thoughts or bored anymore. Instead, we've replaced our boredom with other distractions like television or Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Gchat, um, even MySpace. I'm just kidding, who uses MySpace? Um, but in all honesty, if we take time to replace our time fillers with dream actions, your dreams are so much closer than you know. And I was first inspired to create this exercise when I was reading Erwin McManus' book, The Artist and Soul. I was in a pretty difficult time in my life and I was filling my time with time fillers that were leading me on a path to someone I didn't want to become. And in his book, um, he challenged me and he said, create a list of your distractions, build an exit strategy, and execute it. And this just really blew me away. And I got out a piece of paper immediately and I drew a circle and I began to bubble out all of my dreams, all of my distractions I was facing, everything I was obligated to do, basically the things that were stressing me out and the things I had to accomplish in my life. And after drawing out that web, I really was able to realize that I have so much more time for my things that I love if I would just remove some of these distractions. So that's the whole purpose of this exercise and I'm gonna walk you through quickly how to make your web. So just get out a piece of paper, I mean get out your planner and get a pencil and I would encourage you to start each exercise with a prayer. So pray to God that he will speak to you, help reveal his will for your life and help you make these transformative changes. Next, you start the web by first writing out your obligations. And this is pretty easy. This is the things that bombard your day to day. Um, you know, it's laundry, it's bills, it's your career, it's the things you have to do in life that are your obligations. Um, and then once you have all those obligations filled out, next you can jump to your focuses. So this would include everything that you're focused on right now. Maybe it's an event you're planning, all the dreams you're trying to get done in those first three months, um, what outcomes you're shooting for in your family, career, household, health. So just write out all those focuses. Maybe it's also focused on the family, focused on connecting with God. Maybe it's a spiritual focus as well. Next are your passions. So this is a fun section, and I really want you to spend time here thinking about what your passions are. What really fires you up? What gets you motivated? What makes your heart really happy? Um, what sparks your childish curiosity? And sometimes it's hard to remember what we liked as a child, so I would encourage you to call up your mom, your dad, your brother, your favorite aunt. Uh, whoever was around you when you were a kid and ask them what did I love to do when I was little and you might find that some of those things you love to do are still a passion of yours you just don't pay attention to it or it's something that's in your future calling because I don't think that God puts these passions in our heart at such a young pure age for nothing they're there for a reason so go dig and find those um, and so write out those passions for me the first time I did it I realized that I wasn't making any time for painting, any time for art, creating, dance, journaling, um, just the things that I love to do. Instead, I was filling it up with distractions. So write those out. And then lastly, um, we're going to work on writing out our distractions. And this is probably one of the most important parts because once you write and act, a, declare this is a distraction for me, you actually gain power over this distraction because by acknowledging it, it can change your attitude on how you view it. So let's think about what our distractions are. What is, 
what is in your mind that you're thinking about that isn't serving you? What's an activity that you're doing that isn't serving you? We can think about things on the surface level, like activities we do, or mental thought patterns that we have. The first time I did this, some of my distractions were self-pity, self-doubt. I think those are easy to fall into. You know, I can't do this or, you know, having a pity party. And I've actually listed out some common cultural distractions below, and I'll repeat them here. So some common cultural distractions are Facebook, Netflix, Hulu, Instagram, Snapchat, Gchat, partying, the results of partying, wasting your next day, not feeling well, um, talking about what other people do, analyzing text messages, what a waste, um, focusing on what you don't have, and lastly, focusing on things you can't control. The easiest way to get stressed out and to become crippled with fear and immobile is to focus on things you cannot control. It's important to write those things down and to give them to God because He is the one that's in control, right? So after you have your full web drawn out, and I'll show you one of my old uh, webs here. This is from my 2016 Q1 web. I like to sit down and, and put a heart next to the things that I really love to do. And that's just a moment for me to declare that I'm going to spend more time doing these things. I love journaling. I love spending time with my friends. I love painting. I'm going to do more of this in the next three months. And then two more questions to ask yourself is, what distractions can I erase and replace with a passion? And then lastly, if God was in charge of my schedule, what would he erase? Now that one's pretty deep, but I think it's really amazing to think in that way, like if God was actually in charge, what would he do? And lastly, I just want to remind you and encourage you to not beat yourself up about this. I'm not here to tell you you're doing everything all wrong. I am not perfect at minimizing distractions. I fall prey to distractions daily. Um, but I can testify that when you even change a distraction minimally and work to decrease it and spend time doing things that you love, you will find so much joy and so much happiness and you'll be able to actually make your dreams come true. I had to put away a lot of distractions in order to build a business while having a full-time job and it was just about time management and I knew where my focus was and I think it's so fun and so exciting to be working on a project and to have a dream that you know is God inspired. Um, so don't beat yourself up about this when you're looking through your distractions. If anything you should get really excited because we're making changes, your life's about to transform um, and it's just really exciting. So by even reducing those distractions minimally, you can have a huge impact on your life. And you might say, oh, well, you know, these distractions aren't bad, Polly. This is what I need. I need these distractions to escape. And that's exactly right. We, in our culture, we call distractions. We don't call them that. We call them escapes. I need a veg out. I need to escape. I got to get away. Life's tough. Like, I just need to escape. And I totally get it, and I've totally been there. Um, but in one way, I would like to encourage you to escape into your passions versus escaping into these distractions. I think you'll find yourself more refreshed, more encouraged, um, and more motivated than you would by just escaping into these distractions. So instead of you know turning on the TV, escape into journaling or into reading a book or into painting a picture or into planning that trip that you really want to go on. How exciting would that be, right? So I just want to encourage you in all those ways. Um, and I know that the best is yet to come for you and that God is good and he has big things in store for you. And there are minor sacrifices we have to make on the way to having our big dreams come true. Your schedule determines who you'll become and we just want to encourage you to make the best decisions possible. We love you so much. Have a great time with your refocus cloud and we'll talk soon. Bye guys.